Hello and welcome to an episode which deals in photographic film and its types. The subject expert for today is Mr. Kumar Barun, a professional photographer working as senior photographer with FabFashion.com. And I am Sakshi Mandwal. Objectives Understanding the variety of films Understanding the functions of film Understanding the physical form of film Understanding the film structure Introduction Photographic film captures the image formed by light reflecting from the surface being photographed. The sensitive elements in the film are crystals of, most often, silver halide which can change their structure when excited by light, photons. In general, less sensitive films, slower films, have finer grains that are closely packed and more sensitive films, faster films, have coarser grains. A film may have a distribution of grain sizes to obtain certain desirable properties. The reason for the sensitivity relationship to grain size is related directly to how the grains are converted from a stable, non-developable state to another stable state, latent state, from which they can be developed chemically. This happens in something like the following way. When a photon of light strikes a grain, it dissipates its energy in the crystal grain. This energy may or may not be enough to flip the crystal into a latent state. Generally, it takes a few photons to flip the grain, depending on its size and sensitivity. In the meantime, thermal energy is jiggling the grain and tending to drop it back into its normal state. If enough photons strike the grain in a given time, the grain flips to a latent state and sticks there. We then have a grain that can be turned opaque chemically. Thus, the photons build up a latent image that is later developed. The darkness of the image is more or less proportional to the light striking the film. It takes about the same number of photons to flip a large grain as a small one. Since the larger grain intercepts more light, more of the larger grains will be flipped and thus less light is required to create a latent image. This later phenomenon makes coarse grained films faster, more sensitive. All the silver halide salt particles reside in some emulsion layer depositing on the base layer of films. Color film has three layers of emulsion for three kinds of silver halide which are sensitive for the light of three different light wavelengths. The following diagram shows the basic layered structure of photographic films. Types Color Color film is both sensitive to and records both value, dark and light, and hue. Colors. Color film comes in both negative to make prints and positive to make transparencies or slides. An important characteristic of color film is its color balance. This is the temperature or color of light the film is designed to use under or with. The two major types are daylight 5000 degree Kelvin and tungsten 3200 degree Kelvin. Daylight film is by far the most common. It is for use under surprise daylight and almost strobe or flash. Tungsten film is used under studio lights, known as hot lights, because they get real hot, which use tungsten filaments. These are similar to but not the same as regular incandescent light. Using daylight film under tungsten lamps will give you a heavy gold cast. Using tungsten film under daylight gives you a heavy cyan blue cast. Using either under fluorescent light generally gives you some version of sickly green. You need to use a filter for fluorescence. Black and white. 
Black and white is sensitive to most of the visible spectrum of light, panchromatic, along with some ultraviolet. It is more sensitive to blues, which means skies tend to get overexposed. Infrared Infrared film comes in both color and black and white variations. The black and white takes some special handling and requires the use of a 25A dark red filter. It is unrated as far as speed but about 200 ASA works pretty well. The wonderful effects are created from plants that are growing during the height of spring. With infrared, pretty much everything looks a bit strange. Black and white infrared does not pick up heat signatures. The Kodak version has long been the standby and now Konica makes a version, infrared 750. Ilford SFX200 is a film with extended sensitivity that doesn't require as careful handling. All yield a specialized effect and are great to play with and should be tried. Seeing an entire exhibit done with infrared film gets a bit old. Chromogenic. Chromogenic film is a hybrid of sorts. It is essentially black and white film designed to be processed in standard color chemistry, C41 process. These films can be printed with regular black and white materials. Ilfrod XP2 is a chromogenic film as well as Kodak black and white. Ensure that one doesn't process these films in black and white chemistry. It doesn't work. Orthochromatic film, traditionally used for graphics, records either black or clear. Extremely high contrast. It is available in rolls and sheets. Orthofilm is used in many alternative photographic processes, invariably in sheet form. It is an inexpensive, practical way to create the large positive and negatives needed for many of these processes. It can also be processed to produce a grayscale using Dectol 1 is to 10. Instant Polaroid pretty much controls the market in instant films. So much so that the term Polaroid has become synonymous with instant films. Instant is available in a wide variety of types, particularly at the medium format and larger, in both color and black and white. Many are matched to regular films, color balance and ASA, as they are used for proofing. Film functions. Film performs several functions in the medical imaging process. Knowledge of these functions and how they are affected by the characteristics of different types of film aids in selecting film for a specific clinical procedure and in optimizing radiographic techniques. Image recording. In principle, film is an image converter. It converts radiation, typically light, into various shades of grey or optical density values. An important characteristic of film is that it records or retains an image. An exposure of a fraction of a second can create a permanent image. The amount of exposure required to produce an image depends on the sensitivity or speed of the film being used. Some films are more sensitive than others because of the design or the way they are processed. The sensitivity of radiographic film is generally selected to provide a compromise between two very important factors, patient exposure and image quality, specifically image noise. A highly sensitive film reduces patient exposure but decreases image quality because of the increased quantum noise. Image display. Most filmed medical images are recorded as transparencies. In this form, they can be easily viewed by trans-illumination on a view box. 
the overall appearance and quality of a radiographic image depends on a combination of factors, including the characteristics of the particular film used, the way in which it was exposed and the processing conditions. When a radiograph emerges from the film processor, the image is permanent and cannot be changed. It is, therefore, important that all factors associated with the production of the image are adjusted to produce optimum image quality. Image Storage Film has been the traditional medium for medical image storage and archiving. If a film is properly processed, it will have a lifetime of many years and will, in most cases, outlast its clinical usefulness. The major disadvantages of storing images on film are bulk and inaccessibility. Most clinical facilities must devote considerable space to film storage. Retrieving films from storage generally requires manual search and transportation of the films to a viewing area. Because film performs so many of the functions that makes up the radiographic examination, it will continue to be an important element in the medical imaging process. Because of its limitations, however, it will be replaced by digital imaging media in many clinical applications. Physical Characteristics Number 1 Format. Format is simply the film size. Film ranges from miniature 110 Minox 8mm to small 35mm, medium 6 into 6 cm to 6 into 9 cm, and large 4 into 5 inches to 16 into 20 inches and larger. Film formats are synonymous with camera formats. Number 2. Structure Film is constructed in layers. These layers consist of from top to bottom an anti-scratch layer, the gelatin and silver layer, an adhesive layer, the film base, another adhesive layer, then an anti halation layer. In detail, the anti-scratch layer is just that, a coating on the image side of the film to help protect against scratches. The gelatin or silver layer is of particular importance as this is where the image happens. Physically, the tiny particles of silver are suspended in gelatin which is coated on the base. The gelatin is just that, a natural emulsion. It is the characteristics of this gelatin that it can be dried and form a flexible resistant layer. When soaked in water, the gelatin becomes permeable like a sponge so that chemistry can enter and react with the silver. It can then be dried and will close up again. The silver at this point is silver bromide. When light hits it, it forms a latent image which is made visible and intensified during the development process. The film base is polyester which has replaced glass and celluloid. Polyester is flexible but very dimensionally stable, meaning it doesn't expand or contract much with moisture and temperature changes. The anti halation layer is a light absorbing coating on the back of the film which prevents halos from forming in the image by absorbing light, which may otherwise bounce back up into the silver layer. The adhesive layers simply help the other stuff stick to the polyester. Number 3. Packaging Film comes in two basic forms, roll and sheet. Roll films are available up to medium format sizes and sheets generally from 4 into 5 inches up. Professional outlets offer film in bulk packs, 5 to 10 rolls or more at discount, guaranteeing that it is all from the same manufacturing batch to ensure consistency. Also available is bulk rolls, 50 or 100 meters of film, which can be loaded on cassettes by hand. While very inexpensive bulk films subject to scratches and other handling errors, not the least of which is reusing cassettes too much, they leak when they get old. A small note, when buying roll film, get 24 exposure rolls rather than 36. 
if they are available. Those extra 12 exposures seem to take forever to use up and you can only get 7 strips of 5 in standard binder size negative sleeves. Photographic Characteristics Number 1. ASA Rating or Speed This is a rating by the manufacturer of the particular film's relative sensitivity to light. Another term for this is the film speed. Films are rated as slow, ASA 25-75, medium around ASA 100-125 and fast ASA above 125. So the higher the ASA number, the faster and more sensitive to light the film. When you set the ASA number on your camera, usually by adjusting a dial on the top left of the body or letting the camera automatically set it for you, you are telling the meter how fast your film is. So the first step to good exposures is setting the ASA on your camera correctly. Number 2. Contrast. In general, the slower the speed of the film, the more inherently contrast it is. Thus, a 100 ASA film shows more contrast than a 400 ASA film. This characteristic can be controlled or manipulated by developer, developer or time combinations and agitation during development. Number 3. Grain. Grain refers to the ability to see individual bits of silver. A grainy image simply lacks crispness. Excessive grain looks fuzzy. As for film, the slower, the less inherent grain. Grain is quite important with 35mm photography as making even an 8 into 10 inch print requires quite a bit of enlargement. Some 50x whereas an 8 into 10 from a 4 into 5 inch negative only needs 4x. Grain can be manipulated in development like contrast. Number 4. Exposure Latitude Exposure latitude is a film's ability to be under and overexposed and still produce a printable image. In general, slower films have less latitude than faster films, black and white films more than colour and transparency films, slight film, very little at all. Number 5. Acutance. Acutance is the measurement of a film's ability to record edge sharpness, particularly between differing tonal areas. Slow films do this better than fast films, producing more apparent sharpness in the image. Acutance is actually measured by photographing a knife edge. Number 6. Resolution Resolution is the ability of a film to resolve detail. Related to acutance, resolution is measured by photographing tightly spaced horizontal lines. High resolution film can see several hundred lines per millimeter, low fewer than 50. Grain structure, exposure and development all play a role in resolution. Number 7. Characteristic Curve A characteristic curve is a graph of density versus log exposure for a particular film or developer combination. What this means in English is that a characteristic curve gives you an idea of how a film reacts to a given exposure and a given developer. The characteristic curve consists of a toe, film base plus fog density, a straight line portion and a shoulder, where density reaches Dmax. It can be looked at as a cross section of the film, the least exposed is the thinnest and the most the thickest. The angle of the curve is an indication of contrast with a steeper curve meaning more contrast. The physical form of the film Optical density 
Optical density is the darkness or opaqueness of a transparency film and is produced by film exposure and chemical processing. An image contains areas with different densities that are viewed as various shades of grey. Light penetration The optical density of film is assigned numerical values related to the amount of light that penetrates the film. Increasing film density decreases light penetration. The relationship between density values and light penetration is exponential. A clear piece of film that allows 100% of the light to penetrate has a density value of zero. Radiographic film is never completely clear. The minimum film density is usually in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 density units. This is designated the base plus fog density and is the density of the film base and any inherent fog not associated with exposure. Each unit of density decreases light penetration by a factor of 10. A film area with a density value of 1 allows 10% of the light to penetrate and generally appears as a medium grey when placed on a conventional view box. A film area with a density value of 2 allows 10% of 10%, 1.0% light penetration and appears as a relatively dark area when viewed in the usual manner. With normal view box illumination, it is possible to see through areas of film with density values of up to approximately 2 units. A density value of 3 corresponds to a light penetration of 0.1%, 10% of 10% of 10%. A film with a density value of 3 appears essentially opaque when trans illuminated with a conventional view box. It is possible, however, to see through such a film using a bright, hot light. Radiographic film generally has a maximum density value of approximately 3 density units. This is designated the Dmax of the film. The maximum density that can be produced within a specific film depends on the characteristics of the film and processing conditions. Measurement. The density of film is measured with a densitometer. A light source passes a small beam of light through the film area to be measured. On the other side of the film, a light sensor, photocell, converts the penetrated light into an electrical signal. A special circuit performs a logarithmic conversion on the signal and displays the results in density units. The primary use of densitometers in a clinical facility is to monitor the performance of film processors. <music> film structure Conventional film is layered, as illustrated in the following figure. The active component is an emulsion layer coated onto a base material. Most film used in radiography has an emulsion layer on each side of the base so that it can be used with two intensifying screens simultaneously. Films used in cameras and in selected radiographic procedures such as mammography have one emulsion layer and are called single emulsion films. Cross-section of typical radiographic film base The base of a typical radiographic film is made of a clear polyester material about 150 mu m thick. It provides the physical support for the other film components and does not participate in the image forming process. In some films, the base contains a light blue dye to give the image a more pleasing appearance when illuminated on a view box. Emulsion. The emulsion is the active component in which the image is formed and consists of many small silver halide crystals suspended in gelatin. The gelatin supports, separates and protects the crystals. The typical emulsion is approximately 10 mu m thick. 
several different silver halides have photographic properties, but the one typically used in medical imaging films is silver bromide. The silver bromide is in the form of crystals or grains. Silver halide grains are irregularly shaped like pebbles or grains of sand. Two grain shapes are generally used in film emulsions. One form approximates a cubic configuration with its three dimensions being approximately equal. Another form is tabular shaped grains. The tabular grain is relatively thin in one direction and its length and width are much larger than its thickness, giving it a relatively large surface area. The primary advantage of tabular grain film in comparison to cubic grain film is that sensitizing dyes can be used more effectively to increase sensitivity and reduce crossover exposure. And now it is time for a quick recap. A photofilm is a unique means of capturing vivid pictures. It is a light sensitive material which produces real images. It stores, displays and records images and comes in various forms that is color, black and white, instant etc. That is all that we had for you in this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Till the next time, it's a goodbye.